hurting each other. Secondly, we will use it for our own selfish purpose. Give you a good example. Elisha had just received a twofold anointing from Elijah. And he comes out hoping for a great reception. And there comes a bunch of 42 young youths. He say, hey, Baldy. Hi, Baldy. How are you, Baldy? <laughs> no offense to such who are here. <laughs> as soon as Elisha heard that, he was so angry, he commanded, come out. And two ferocious bears came out and kill all these 42 youths. What was the purpose of that? What was the purpose? Ego. Ego. That was the purpose, ego. The anointings of God, the power that will be entrusted in this end time generation, you know, let me tell you one thing. We have not seen anything yet. The powers of the age to come. We don't, know, we don't understand what it means. It is more than the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is more than the seven spirits of the Lord. It's more than all this. What they are... I quote what the angel once told me, even we have not seen it yet. You know, several years ago, I was invited to speak at a conference in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And on the afternoon when I was waiting on the Lord, four angels visited me. And the chief among them said, we are the chief prince over the state of Louisiana. And then the angel spoke to me, telling me what happened during the Katrina storm that blew. What was the reason it happened? What was the spiritual reason behind it? And what were the angelic activities involved during the Katrina devastation? And what was the end result of all that? And after speaking all that, he said, at this meeting, you shall speak on the powers of the age to come. So I've, I've, heard, I've heard of that phrase in Hebrews chapter 6, but I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that subject. So I asked them, what does it mean? So he went on explaining to me. He said, this is the last final thrust. The whole power of the Holy Spirit will be poured out in an unlimited manner upon the warrior company of the Lord Jesus. So, then he made another shocking statement, you know. He said, we in heaven have not seen such a power of the Holy Spirit yet. Wow. Uh, that blew me off. If the angels in heaven have not seen it, then what is it? This is a power hidden in the wisdom of God. Hidden. Just like the resurrection of Christ was hidden in Christ, in God. Likewise, the power of God is hidden, waiting to be unleashed upon the warrior company, the warrior bride in the last days. When it's poured out, history has never seen anything like this before. Whatever you read in the Bible, there's no precedence to what is going to take place in the last days. You will, you will find nothing mentioned here. So don't look for any biblical examples to compare. There aren't. If the angels in heaven have not seen, what more is there? What more? This last generation, K 
cannot make the mistakes like the past have made. Like what my generation have made, the previous generation have made, the biblical prophets and patriarchs have made. You cannot afford to make a mistake because you are the last runner now. The baton went past to you. You are the last runner, the last final 25 meters. You must run to win. You cannot drop the baton. You cannot afford to make a mistake. So that is why God is going to bring down his special forces. The special forces are going to come and they are going to mentor us. They are going to mentor us so that we will not make the mistakes like they made. Amen. You know, turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 12 or look at Hebrews 11.40 God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Who are the they? The they are the ones the heroes that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. It talks about Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Yepta, David, Samuel, and all the prophets down the line. All of them, the scripture says, are not made perfect without us. What does that mean? This is something very strange, you know, which means... Their ministries are not completed. They are waiting for you to come in whole hands together with them. Yes. Or rather they come in whole hands with you and say, together we are a company now. Amen. Together we will finish that work. You know, Elijah ran away from Jezebel. But in the last days, he's going to come and hold your hand and together you're going to face Jezebel. No more running. You're going to face Jezebel. In the cage. In the cage. Amen. So that, you know why in the cage? So that she doesn't run anywhere. We call the shots now. No more Jezebel. We set the boundaries. Okay, come. Let's do it. Let's do it. No more running. You know, this is the exact words I heard from the lips of the prophet Elijah just two months ago. I was called to fast and pray in Israel during the last week of April. And during that period, the seven days that I was in Israel, every day I had many, many visitations from several prophets. Specifically, Elijah visited me several times. And he spoke to me about Jezebel. He said, you must know about her so that you can train the warriors to face her. Where I failed, where I missed it, I'm going to teach you now everything that makes her her weaknesses her strength so that you can finish her off in the last days amen. amen now let me tell you something okay the Jezebel that you and I are going to face in the last days is not the Jezebel that Elijah faced the Jezebel that you and I are going to face is a combination of two, Ashtaroth and Jezebel together. Together. You know, the Lord revealed to me, when Jezebel was born, her father 
dedicated her to Ashtaroth. She was dedicated to Ashtaroth. And she was filled with the spirit of Ashtaroth when she was on this earth as a queen. So now, in the spirit, we are going to contend, not just with Jezebel, but the two in one. Estroth and Jezebel together in one. Just like God has a double fold, double edged sword, Amen. the devil has his double edged sword. But the weapons of our warfare are mightier Amen. than what the enemy has. Amen. Amen. They are mightier. Yes. We need to know this. We need to know what are our weapons that are mightier. The enemies that we are contending. Now, just like the heavenly hosts are going to come and join together with us, so will be the enemy hosts will also join forces together. They will multiply. But here is a difference. No matter how many demons join together, they are no match for you. Why? Because you are not one. You are three. Amen? What is the three? You see, those are the old teachings. <laughs> Throw away that old teaching. You are one. And you will have your saint from heaven. That's two. And then the third is the greater one inside you. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He comes. That makes three. Amen. No weapon in hell is any match for you. Because the saints in glory, they are in glory. You know, they are not ordinary people like us. They are in glory. When they come upon you, like an anointing coming upon you, they, it, you are infused with that anointing. You are infused with that power. Do you mind I share about that fighting game that you shared with us last, yesterday afternoon? Terry was sharing with us yesterday afternoon while we were waiting to go for lunch that uh, someone that he knows, God was called to... Uh, please correct me if I miss any details, okay? Someone was called into the world wrestling match. Huh? What? Cage, yeah, cage. In a cage. Now this guy, a believer, felt that God called him to go to the fight. Okay? Let's not worry about all those uh, theology about it. Okay? We'll, we'll put away all the theology. <clears throat> so, and he was a six-footer. Right? Who? Him? Oh, you told the story. That was you? No. <laughs> okay, okay. So, and this guy, and his opponent was a big, heavy guy. Mighty guy, like a Goliath. And the fighter was like David. But, when he gave a punch, this big Goliath was knocked out. Later on, he testified that something came upon him when he gave that punch. What is that something that came upon him? We always classify that something as the anointing. Of course it is the anointing. But what is that something that came upon? Spirit of Samson? Spirit of what? Might. Okay, yes, of course the spirit of might. You see, now remember, in the last days, we are going to put away our old school of theology. Okay? Put away all the old school of theology. You must shred it. Shred it. That does not mean these new teachings, they're not new, no, they're all old. Because anything that's in heaven is not new, it's all old. It appears new to us. But it's not new. They are all founded in the spirit of the word of God. It is there. 
It's just that it's shrouded in the word that you can't see it black and white. But when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, you can see it's right there all the while. You know, the Pharisees believe that Elijah will come and restore all things. And the Lord Jesus said, if you can believe, this is the Elijah to come. What does that mean? He pointed a finger at John the Baptist. He said, if you can believe, why must the Lord Jesus use that word, if you can believe? He said, this is the Elijah to come. What does that mean? If you can believe, which means it's difficult to believe. It is hard to believe. Because this was not what we were taught from Sunday school. Sunday school would call this reincarnation. It's not reincarnation, you know. That is a baloney from the devil. The real things are from God. The real things. It's not reincarnation. Something like that. To give you a definition of understanding. Now let me go on record. I'm not preaching about reincarnation. Okay? I don't believe on the Buddhist concept or Hindu's concept of reincarnation. The Hindus believe there are 84,000 rebirths in a person's life. <laughs> you go on dying, burning, dying, burning, dying, burning, 84,000 times until you are perfected anyway along the line. How are you going to keep track which, what was the number? <laughs> this is not reincarnation. Okay? You are you. But that that person comes inside you. They come inside you to you and them join together to do the work. To fulfill that work. That's what is the last, that's what the scripture, Hebrews 11.40 talks about. Without us, they are not perfect. You know, I can share with you from my own personal life. When I was called by the Lord, to go and evangelize Tibet and Nepal, the Lord spoke to me about the ministry of Sadhu Sundar Singh. Have you heard of him? Yes. A legendary saint in India. He spoke to me and then he said, will you continue his work? I said, I thought he had already finished his work. And he was like raptured, like Enoch. The Lord said, will you continue his work? Which means, something was left undone. So I said, yes, Lord, I will do it. And then he had a shawl like this on his shoulder. Both of them appeared before me, you know. So the Lord took the shawl from his shoulder and walked towards me and laid that shawl on my shoulder. He said, from this day onwards, fulfill that work and complete it. So from that day till 2006, for 20 years, whenever I go to Tibet, I will find this saint coming along with me and telling me how to do the work of God. How to do the work. He said, this is the, way, this is the place God wants you to go this year. And this is, what you should, this is the person you should meet. That is the monk you should preach the gospel to today. And at times, I have felt him just boom, come inside my body. And I, I, can, I can know a difference, you know, when they enter in. And then my thinking, my speaking is otherworldly. It's not more me. It's some different. That's what the Lord Jesus said, if you can believe. Can you? Yes. Can you? Yes. If you can believe. This is the Elijah to come, if you can believe. But in order for you to believe, you must first crucify your mind of all the old theology. Get rid of all the old theology. 
take away all the clutter from all the old school of teaching and old school of training. We are not teaching you new theology, no? The same Bible. I believe with all my heart, the same Bible. So do all the people in heaven believe in this Bible. It is the absolute truth of God. I'm not writing a new Bible. The Lord Jesus himself said, it's not the apostle saying, it's not the patriarch saying, it's the Lord Jesus who said, if you can believe, if you can believe in the last days, let me show you something. Turn with me to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 is the last book, the last chapter of the last book in the Old Testament. And that chapter, if you read it very carefully, it talks about the end times. It doesn't talk about Malachi's times. It doesn't even talk about the first coming of the Lord. It talks about the second coming, the end times, the last days. And for behold, the day comes that shall burn like an oven. Now, during the first coming, nothing burned like an oven. So it talks about the last days. Now look at verse 4. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and ordinances. And behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now, why specifically these two prophets' names are mentioned in the last chapter of the last book of the Old Testament talking about the end times? And then you read on the Mount of Transfiguration, these two prophets appeared before the Lord Jesus. And Zechariah chapter 4 says, there will be two witnesses who stand before the God of the earth. The Lord of the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount Transfiguration was standing on the earth. And there will be these two witnesses, the two olive trees. They appeared there. And here it talks very specifically about Moses and Elijah in the last days. You know, these two saints, if you look at them, Moses died. The death is like how we know it of. But his body was hidden by God. If he really died, why hide the body? Right? Tell me, if he really died, why hide the body? Why did the Lord did not allow anybody but himself buried the body, hide the body? Now you look at Elijah. He was hidden in heaven. One was hidden in heaven, another hidden on earth. For what? For the last days. For the last days. Hidden in both realms for the last days. And they will make their appearances. Hiding two companies. The Moses company and the Elijah company. There will be these two companies in the last days. With these two prophets physically present on the earth, but overseeing and spearheading these two companies, the Moses company and the Elijah company. Now, look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, you find something very interesting there. <clears throat> When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, the scripture says, verse 51, <clears throat> And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints, <coughs> excuse me, that slept were raised, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Okay, now we have the scripture, right? Okay. 
So the graves were open. Many saints, now not all saints, many saints. So among the all the dead, the Lord handpicked someone, some few, those whom the Jews would recognize as patriarchs or prophets. The saints arose. Not in the spirit. If it was in the spirit, they could not have appeared unto many in the city. Right? They arose bodily. They arose bodily and they appeared unto many. So far so good? If you can believe. Do you? Shall we continue? Okay. Now, they all arose. Now the Lord Jesus Christ arose. Now please follow with me. Now, from there, let's go to Acts chapter 1. On Mount Olives. The Lord Jesus Christ speaks to the, all the disciples for the last time. As he was speaking, a cloud came down from heaven and caught the Lord Jesus Christ and brought him up to heaven. Now what about this other company that arose from the grave? We don't read that they all went up together with the Lord. Amen, that's right. Only the Lord was taken up to heaven. So what about this company? <laughs> Left behind. <laughs> See? To be left behind is not so bad after all. <laughs> Do you know why they are left behind? To help you and me. Amen. To help you and me. However, they all kept hidden for such a time as this. From AD 1 right up to now, they've been kept hidden. They have been kept hidden for such a time as this. They have been waiting, waiting for such a time as this to make themselves known one more time. To make themselves known one more time like how they did in the first century. But there is a difference now. The difference is they need you to work in partnership. They need you to work in partnership. That is why it is very, very important for you to have the nature of the Lamb. Yes. Yes. You must have the nature of the Lamb that is submissive, that is obedient, and that is willing to lay down its life, not counting the cost. If you qualify with these qualities, then you are the rightful candidate for these saints to work together with you. Amen. Our natures must change. You cannot be you anymore. You must die. You must die. If you're not willing to die, someone else will help to put you to death. <laughs> People like us. Even then when you refuse. All right, so be it. You are disqualified. That doesn't mean you, you will lose your salvation, you know. No, no, no. You will not lose your salvation. Let me tell you one thing, okay. Even the reserves get a reward. You know, in the World Cup soccer team, there are 22 people, 22 players, you know. 11 are reserves. But 11 play the actual game. But when the award ceremony comes, all the 22 get a medal. He who stays behind and he who goes out for war. Yes. They both share in the bounty. Yes. But there is a difference. When you actually play in the game, you score a goal, when you get the medal, you feel proud of it. 
But when you're sitting in the fence and you still get a medal, there's no pride in there, you know. You get what I mean? It's a complimentary because you tack along. <laughs> Please remember, the war is real. The threat is real. The war is real and the threat is real. We have a huge company in heaven that is going to work together with us. You know, this company in heaven, not only, if you read in Malachi, it says, the law of Moses. Now look, look at the scripture again. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and ordinances. The law of Moses is not just the Ten Commandments, but everything that the Lord spoke on Mount Sinai. What has that got to do for the last days? You know, when the law was revealed to Moses, it was in version 1.0. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, he amplified it, version 2.0. <laughs> in the last days, you are going to get the final revelation, version 3.0. The final revelation of the completeness of the word of God. See, what was given to Moses in the dispensation of grace, the Lord Jesus Christ amplified it. He said, you have heard it being said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, if somebody slaps you on your right cheek, turn your left. Now, in the last days, that concept cannot work because your enemy is very real. You cannot go to your enemy can you imagine pastor sweet <coughs> walking out on the street and said sons and daughters <laughs> fight not <laughs> and one guy walks up to me and punches him on the nose oh what about the left cheek <laughs> Look, it's a whole lot of a different ball game in the last days. All the spooning hook should now be bent to a sword in the last days. Weapons, we should be turned into a weapon. So it's a whole lot of a different game. So we need new laws. New laws. It's the same Moses, it's the same law, but version 3.0. There's a third layer that's hidden in the word. When the Lord Jesus came, he revealed the second layer. The second layer was necessary for the dispensation of grace. When James and John told the Lord Jesus, Lord, these people did not accept you. Shall we call down fire and lightning from heaven like what Elijah did? The Lord Jesus Christ looked at them and said, You do not know what spirit you have received. That spirit was okay for the Old Testament. But that spirit is not okay in the New Covenant. You see, the same thing, what Elijah did was right, but what these disciples, if they had done it, would have been wrong. The same thing, fire coming down, but it was wrong. But in the last days, you will do it. You will point your finger at the heavens and fire will come down. Revelation chapter 11 tells us like that. When the two witnesses do their ministry and they will call down fire from heaven and you all over the world will also perform the same miracle working power of God. The same. The same the powers of the age to come. But before that can be entrusted in your hands, 
you must have the nature of the lamb. You know what is the nature of the lamb? It is authority under meekness. It is authority enshrined in meekness. Yes, the lion was there, but within the lion was the lamb. Bold and powerful, but you had that shitty mood, the lamb. So look at the brazen altar. It is fireproof, but within it is the shitty mood. Insignificant, unseeable shitty mood, the tempered nature of humility. <laughs> 